Welcome to the tutorial on adding a basic rock beat to Finale Notepad 2012. Here I've set up my score with four different tracks, all one single stave each. I'm going to focus on my drum kit. When I select a note for the drum kit, it goes through all the different instruments that I can see. And I might start with my hi-hat. And for a hi-hat, I need to select quaver, or eighth note. Once I've entered my quaver, if for some reason I didn't select the actual hi-hat note that I was after, I press the up and down arrows, and I can go right through the whole drum kit and hear all the amazing sounds that they have. And the one that I want is the hi-hat on top of the stave. I think the hi-hat closed will have a much cleaner sound. Once I've selected that, I need to then do quavers all the way. And again, I'm going to scroll through the sounds. I can actually press the minus, and the minus will only scroll through sounds on that particular note. So I hit the minus until I get to hi-hat closed. Right, now I have all of my hi-hat beats and I'm just going to start with one bar. Once I have one bar, I can copy it throughout my composition. I'm going to change the stem direction by pressing down the L key. And as I press the L key, you'll see that the stems go up for the quavers and then the stems go down. I want all my stems to go up. So I go to the next group of four, press the L key. And now I'm going to add my snare. And the snare is in the second top space. A basic backbeat snare goes on the second beat and the third beat. I need to select quaver for that one, sorry. The second beat and the fourth beat. So I have a snare drum and here if I go to the snare cross stick, I can see that has a circle and I just want a regular snare. So up and down until I find it or the minus uh, key. And now I have all the upstrokes for my hands. Now that I have that particular bar done, I could copy that throughout my composition, but I'm missing the bass drum. Unfortunately, with my bass drum, I want my stems to go down, and my bass drum is usually on the bottom space, so I could notate it like this. Instead of copying, I could just put it straight back in again. And perhaps this would be an acceptable version of my basic rock beat. Okay, to be a little bit more thorough and make sure that my stems go down for my drum kit, I'll just Command Z to undo, and I can select a new layer. So on the bottom left here, I have four possible layers, and I'm gonna select the second layer. Once I select the second layer, and I enter my notes, and I'm gonna select the crotchet, because I wanna crotchet on the first beat, you'll notice as I go from one note to the other, these actually become red notes to show me I'm on a different layer. And layer 3 and layer 4 will be different colours again, such as blue or green. Okay, I want to rest on my second beat, so I'm going to select the rest, and I'm going to try and add one in between. There we go, and one at the end, and now I have my stems down. If my stems were the wrong direction, so now I'm pressing the left and right cursor uh, keys, if I'm on my simple entry tool and I press the left and right keys, I can find the note that I'm after. You'll notice that I cannot use or select the notes that are on layer one because I'm currently on layer two. If I want to select the notes on layer one, I have to go back to layer one and then I can select those notes. On a Mac, if I do option click, it will actually select the note that I'm after. That's option click to select the note. 
Another way would be to uh, just use the cursor keys left and right once one note had been selected. Sometimes that's a bit problematic. It's a bit hard to select that particular snare, uh, hi-hat, sorry, on its own. Using the cursor keys, it likes to jump down to that snare. So maybe that's when an option click would be a little bit more precise. You notice that I haven't put the bass drum in the second bar yet, so I'm going to go up to the selection tool, select my first bar, command C to copy, second bar, command V to paste, and now I've copied that. I could also continue to uh, enter this. I think if I select a number of bars and press paste, it doesn't like that. So I could do one at a time, or if I undo that and I select here, I can go to edit and then paste multiple and I might like to add it six times. And so it's added it six times throughout my composition, which takes me up to my last bar, because I only have an eight bar composition in this particular instance. If I want to add an extra bar, I can go to Edit and Add Measures. Then I can add perhaps another 12 measures to my composition. And now it's added 12 measures to the end of my composition. So my first page is full. If I go down to the navigation tools on the bottom left and select the left button, I can see my final measures or bars as we call them in Australia uh, on the next page. And then I have one very awkwardly spaced bar at the end, which is fine. That's very hard to fix up in Finale Notepad. If you have the full version of Finale, that would be fine. So here I have my basic rock beat. I'm gonna Command Z to undo so I only have the eight bars that I wanted, and I'll play those. Now you'll notice my synth isn't playing because I actually muted it under Score Manager. So I'm going to go back to Score Manager, and I'm going to change that to 101. So we can then hear it with a synthesizer. And in this instance, it's a piano sound playing. Perhaps uh, one thing that would have been nice here is to add a 13th bar and just put a C major chord at the end, which would make it sound finished. I have another copy here of some basic rock beats that I've done. I'm just going to zoom in to 200% for you and resize that window a little bit. And I want you to listen to these bars and imagine them in isolation. So I've increased complexity as I've gone along. In this particular bar, in the first bar, I've added two bass drums, so two quavers here to the third beat of the bar. In this particular example, I have a rest for the first quaver of the third beat, and I've added an extra snare on the last quaver. Here I have the regular backbeat pattern for the snare, but I have two quavers to begin with and one quaver to end with for the bass drum. And here I have a combination of each. Let's have a listen to those. You'll notice that the bass drum and the snare drum often alternate. When they play together, it sounds a lot more driven and a lot more perhaps stronger sounding or more emphatic in its um, accenting of the beat. We'll listen to it one more time. Hopefully this tutorial helped you in adding your hi-hat, your snare and your bass drum using two layers in Finale Notepad 2012. If you have any questions, please feel free to email me or come and speak to me when you're next available. Good luck with adding your basic rock beat to your composition.